All right, uh, camera's rolling. Yep. So, welcome everyone to the third episode of the Fotscast, the Total Fall of the Samurai podcast, where we go over general mod development questions from the community and just go on way tangents that are way too long and in depth for what we actually should be doing. So, today we are here with Izzy, the mod creator himself, and Prussia, who is one of the members of the testing team. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. So, um, just to get the ball rolling, I put out a seminar, I put out a questionnaire to the community so they could submit, submit their most burning questions and um, we got nine responses which I was able to immediately cut down to five because four of them are the exact same question. Okay. We all know what that question is going to be and I can practically answer it myself when it's done. Ah uh, yeah, I already knew this question was going to come. It's the when will it be released question, and the answer will stay the same every single time it's asked, when it's done. Yep. Alright, so uh, next question. Will there be a full European campaign map in the future? Yep. Alright, that's, uh, that's confirmed. <laughs> um, will in the future... Sweden, Norway, and Denmark be playable? If we have a full European map, then I mean, Norway, I mean, the Scandinavian countries are in Europe, if I checked last time, so then yes. No, I'm, I've actually been thinking about how we would make them playable, and we would just basically have um, separate main packs that would make different countries playable. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, because you can only have a hard limit amount of countries that you can play in the campaign. Um, there are 10, right? 10 factions yeah. in the Fall of the Samurai. Yeah, but there's actually a little trick you can go around it. Yeah, so, this, so there was already a trick for that. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a, you can actually use the Shogun 2 factions. And um, you can even use the Shogun 2 map and just change it to the Fall of the Samurai map, to the start position. So you just have to make new factions without using the uh, Boshin naming convention. And then in theory you can use those factions as playables. Okay, that, that drastically uh, increases the amount of playable factions you can have shipped at once. Um, I think as much as you want. There is no limit limitation. Sarah made a, a faction pack. So it's all uh normally there's no limit. I mean she didn't arrive a limit, so Right, so practically um all major powers in Europe will be playable. Yep. Alright. Um could you update the British again? I feel that this is mostly related to V2. Uh <laughs> weird question. Why, why in heaven's sake will I do that? Um, I'm actually going to look up who actually... Uh... Oh no, they didn't have to give their names uh, for this one. I don't actually know who asked this one, but... Um, if, you, uh, if you were the one who asked this one... Um, please elaborate in the comment section. I just want to let everyone know that Scramble for the Far East is for the moment not... Uh been worked on so I'm not even sure that I even go back maybe one last update but I'm busy now with my main mod and all my focus goes there will you be able to make a custom campaign map that looks about as good as the vanilla campaign map of Japan can you talk about some of the challenges with editing the campaign map um, I think the Carlist Wars campaign map looks pretty good. I mean, you have tested it, so maybe it can be better. So actually, that question is for the testers, not really for me. But... In and of itself, for a modded campaign map and how big it is and 
how much work it would be to actually fully decorate it. It already looks pretty good. It's just that, um, of course, the vanilla campaign map had a lot more work put into it by a lot, lot bigger group of people. So it will always be more detailed and more populated by assets. But that's just a bit of a problem with the scale we're going with. Is everything is more spaced out. Yeah, that's kind of the thing, isn't it? Like the map is looks amazing. It looks good, but there are like these big open plains with nothingness between cities, which is a bit. Of course, detailing the map as detailed as it is in the game is impossible. Well, I mean, it, it's possible, but it will take an extreme amount of time that we just don't have. Exactly, that's what I mean. We don't have the time. If I'm still you know. going to. I am still going to add a, a lot of uh, props on it. So, like villages and, um, like main static props on the campaign map because the campaign map. You know, I I made a big part already of it, but I still have to make it. But I'm doing it after the unit models. Then I go back to the campaign map, and then I will add a lot of props so to. Uh, populate more the campaign map. Um, I probably also would change the trees again because I'm going to add more different types of trees to uh, match the and for, uh, well, North Africa, climate. I mean, yeah, climate. So, I mean, the climate map is already ready. I mean, you already have seen it that you have kind of yeah. dry areas. A lot more dry areas. Yeah. Getting more into the lush green fields the further you go to France. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, and it also reflects on the battle map, so that's also already a, a good thing. Yeah, it did. That's a smaller detail, but I kind of noticed that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to populate much more the campaign map. No problem, so a lot of stuff will be added. As for the difficulties with it, it's just mainly time, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, I'm the only one really developing it, so, I mean... Yeah, we're, Samurai... we're, all, we're always open to get people on the team that are actually uh, modders. Yeah, I don't think you will... I don't think you really will find like, them. Yeah, like, even model makers are already appreciated, I would assume. Yeah, of course. That's a work for me. Yeah. Uh, what do you have planned for creating Western-style fortresses and siege battles? What was the question again? Sorry. Uh, what do you have planned for creating Western-styled fortresses and siege battles? Um, at least for the Carlist Wars, there are um, there will be two main, um, you could say, standard buildings. Be the same way as how Empire and Napoleon Total War works, except, um, how can I explain it? The the city system in Shogun 2, well, in Fall of the Samurai, is that you have like six levels. I think you can even go more, I think eight levels if you really want to, of of uh, of city. So you go from a, a town, village, towards city, castle, whatever. So in that frame, I really want to work on, so you, I want to work on a coastal area of a city and an inland area. So that is part of the southern southern European culture. While the northern European culture will have the same style except maybe different color of textures. So a lot more gray stone instead yeah, of the more right. lighter brown stone that's found in um, Spain. Yeah, so sandstone for, you could say for um, the southern European one, so two styles with six levels. That means from village to a city with a fort. Actually, the models that you see on the campaign map, that's actually the model I want to go through as a real city. So you have a fort in the middle. That's like the main or the last level of city uh, building, you could say. And then uh, for, this, for, for the southern European culture, while the northern European has their own texture style. So it's going to be two separate styles of texture with a inland and a coastal fortress. Yeah, because um, 
if I ever want to expand, because after the Carlist Wars comes Africa, that means, of course, the, the Arabic African uh, culture have a different style. So that's why I need the other ones for another style. Okay, that is uh, us pretty much through the questions. Okay. So then to just talk a bit about the work that's been done in the meantime as uh, well as clarifying why updates have been so slow. Been busy, busy in real life, of course, so... <laughs> real um... life comes first. Yep, so I've been two months, like I couldn't mod really that much because I had really things to do. Um, I'm taking my time now in modding. Um, well, you because... say you've been taking your time. You've like, what, put out five or so betas over the past two weeks? Yeah. Well, alphas, I mean, for you guys, of course, not for the, the main people. But, you know, I've, I've noticed that testing is the key of a good mod. That is why I do it the whole time. Because to take out as much as bugs that you can take out. So that's why every addition I add, I want to see, okay, because I can't test every everything. I just don't know. That, that, that would just like double the time needed to make the mod. Yeah. So that's why I, I make a lot of test alphas. So to make the game as stable as possible. So because I add, now I'm busy, for example, with animation. There are a lot of new additions I'm adding to the game that are, or have never been added to the, to the vanilla game, you could say. I'm trying some stuff out, so it takes a bit of time. So that has to be tested, and, you know, it has to be tested. Okay, how does the AI react? Because we know it's pretty brain dead. You have to see, okay, how smooth is the gameplay? Um, I like big battles, so it means, of course, that you have to lower some quality, but how much quality you have to lower? Um, do you have any lag? Uh, are there any bugs you get or any crashes you get for... Sometimes one crash can be just come from out of nowhere for a really small thing, like a particle effect or a, a trail, and that can cause an entire CTV just for one little thing. And that is why testing is so important. And I think actually a lot of game developers can or well, not learn from it, they have to do the same thing. I feel that lately, I mean, we see with CA uh, a lot lately, where they just can't fix a game and they just abandon the game. And I think is that they have, they have to take more time in testing. But of course, they want to, you know, they want to earn as much as money as possible, as fast as possible, so they don't test so much the game. And that is so important for me personally, for this mod, it's like a new game. Um, testing is really important. so. You don't take it out because I can see it in the Scramble of the Far East. Scramble has a lot of bugs. So that's why it's like my testing area more than really my main mod. So maybe people understand why I don't put so much effort in Scramble because it is in my main mod. So yeah, testing takes a lot of time, but it's really important. Well, that's... Uh... Go ahead. Uh, that's uh, why I've been actually happy with how uh, active the testing team has been ever since you uh, came back to modding. I expected to have to purchase it all over again. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, have you? Yeah, I mean, I think the game developing companies lately are just not testing enough their game, and that is why, like with CA lately, they are becoming like the main game gaming companies while. Like they release a game full of bugs and then they have to patch it like I don't know how many times to make a good game. I think they could, you know, change that issue by just testing for a much more longer time. You develop a game and then you test it for a long time. And you, you can just let the community test it for you. You don't need to pay for it. It's pretty easy. And just do a uh, closed beta program for people that buy like the collector's edition. Yeah, that's why I don't understand, like, with CA, if lately it's like, like this, they, they make a game, they release it, a lot of bugs, oh yeah, we'll release uh, a first day patch to fix it, but that's not the way actually it has to be. Mm, it has I, to be actually, stable. I heard that with the Warhammer teams that they actually try that now. Like, they have people try closed betas and they report back. 
but I could be wrong, but I heard that for the Warhammer games, they do that. Well, we'll see what it gives when Warhammer 3 comes out. Exactly. I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of uh, Warhammer, a more historical game, and I think also lately that CA is actually abandoning more and more that uh, sinking ship, you could say. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 I don't see it's very good for CA. In, in historical gaming, I don't think they can take the money out of the historical games. It's more about fantasy. I think that they earn much more money. So, what I think it's, the problem it's, is a lot of it. A... Oh, yeah, go ahead. A lot of it also comes down to the fact that Warhammer Fantasy fans just haven't had a good game other than Vermintide in the last like 10 years. So they're willing to spend as much as they have to to actually get a good game out of a setting that has been declared dead by its creator. Oh really? I didn't know that. I mean, I'm not a war... I have no idea of the no, Warhammer um, world. So. Warhammer Fantasy has been abandoned by Games Workshop for a good amount of years now, with Age of Sigmar taking its place, and uh, that setting has its problems. It does. Uh, okay. It's um, it's a high fantasy setting instead of the way more dark and gritty setting that Warhammer Fantasy was. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. at least we still have forty k. Yeah, I've I've no I've no idea. I mean, forty uh, k. I heard it's like in space or something. That's what I heard, but I have no idea. In space, yeah. So, uh, no, uh, yeah, I mean, Warhammer Forty K. It's it's its own entity with its own extremely bloated lore and uh, hundreds of books. We've gone from talking to the mod to talking about Games Workshop Warhammer Forty K. Let's go. It'll it'll like the past two podcasts have basically just gone into tangents like that anyway so why not we we've yeah, already right. addressed all the questions the community submitted um like i'm going to make another video just going over the uh, stuff added in the last couple of betas in ah, last couple of alphas in a few days you have to wait uh i think i have a better one coming so. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to wait until I have like five or six of them so I can release all of that at once. Yeah. Just so okay. I don't make like two minute videos. That's because I'm making a lot of new animations for the mod. So it's more diverse, you could say, or more variety. Uh, a bit like yeah, Empire that, that, that will be a big one. Sorry? That will be a big one uh, to get yeah. people excited. Yeah, it's a lot of animations that I'm adding, like, you know, the, the way officers act when they're idle and whatsoever. I really like that in Empire Total the War, they were using, like, a like a spyglass or something like this. So, yeah, uh, I noticed that. Yeah, there's some little details that I really like. That's pretty cool. You don't see that a lot in lately in, in later Total War games where everything is, like, I don't know, like, just add it and... Where it all has to be motion captured. Yeah, so... I mean, yeah, there are some details, and I think, you know, people, some appreciate it, others, of course, appreciate more, like... General content. Yeah, for example, so that's why testing takes so much time, but uh, I'm happy where I'm going, I'm happy I'm going with the mod, it's becoming better and better, so... I just hope uh, we'll have to have a first release, an alpha release for the public, maybe end of this year. At least that's my purpose, but let's see. Maybe sooner, maybe later, just depends on how development goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm concentrating on the car list war, so I'm thinking, okay, I'll release the first car list war. The, the main thing is after, after the unit models, I'm going to the campaign map, finish the campaign map, Go to the uh, siege, um, the siege maps. So the cities, fortresses, villages. That will take because that's a bit unknown for me. I've never really modded that area. And from that, after I have finished or I have a big solid piece, then I can go to custom battle maps. So you don't play in Japan. Um, and then in theory, I could uh, make or have a, a first public alpha. So that's a possibility. 
Uh, that, that would be a big milestone for the uh, mod. Really big. That'd be fun. Yeah. Isn't it? Biggest I've ever built. Biggest, yeah. So it will take some time. Because a lot of scripts also have to be made before I forget about it. Some scripts have to be made for the game. So that's also a bit, uh, you know, I have to think to work uh, on it. So it's, it's going to take a bit of time, but I'm, I'm glad the way it goes. So I'm taking my time, testing a lot. So I'm, you know, I'm actually, uh, I'm enjoying uh, to mod that way. I'm not like going too crazy about it because, you know, personal life. And, you know, sometimes also a bit of mental health because if you just mod, 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 it's not really healthy the whole time. So sometimes you need to do other stuff. So, yeah. No, I get that. Don't burn yourself out. That's how you get depressed and that, that's not good for anyone, is it? No, correct. You have an, uh, do you uh, guys have any questions, actually? No, no. Mainly just um, how about the just battle replays? Are we going to do any more of that in the future, or what are we doing with that? Uh, like, are we going to host more events? Or... I, I am definitely planning to do more events in the future. It's just I've been kind of busy with school at the moment. It's uh, yeah, yeah. getting towards exams. Exams, yes. Yeah, a, a lot of work on my um, group project the last couple of months. It, it's been very busy for me as well which is why i'm happy that um you guys in the testing team have been so proactive in testing out the alphas that Desi put out because i'm just really didn't have a lot of time to do it myself but as soon as um my exams are over and the uh summer holiday begins i'll definitely be putting on more events Yeah, of course. I mean, you have Scramble, huh? So you we can have still use that. we have Scramble. I will be update. I will then also be making an update to the uh, multiplayer balance mod, multiplayer balance sub mod for it, yeah. to balance out unit prices a bit more. I of course, yeah, yeah. and uh, I am that planning. will be a bit more granular than the one I made originally. They just put a blanket price on everything. Yeah, just I mean, I mean, you all know, of course, that the Carlist War is only single player, except yeah, uh, it's campaign. it's only meant to be a single player or co op experience. It's not really yeah. built to be a multiplayer experience, which will be its own offshoot later on. Yeah, correct. Because the stats uh, to make more realistic stats for MP mode. Yeah, that you um, actually have to think a lot more about your army build. Yeah, I'm. I'm really going. To, I already have a good idea. So how to make it realistic, like flanking, walking, shooting, all those stuff. Um, because the Carlist War is really made for the AI, actually. So not really for player to player. Then again, the eye being fried, absolutely fried, and not doing anything logical at all. No, that's true. Because I, I, I feel, feel like they true. used the same AI in Fall of the Samurai as in Vanilla Shogun 2, which wasn't made for linear combat. Um, no, I, th I think there's not one really good Total War game that actually is good for linear uh, battle. Um, Empire was a mess. Napoleon was a mess. Is a mess still in that case. Um, Fall of the Samurai was a bit better if you compare it to the other games. So, but I think I tried to do it more linear. Um, I think I succeeded. Of course, sometimes it still blobs up, but I think I kind of fixed that issue that at least they do fight in a line. If you go in a full stack army, that means 20 units or lesser, not more, because then, yeah. They you fight in a line. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting, but the last time I tested, they all went in a column and started marching towards my line, slowly dying. Did you have a more than a two unit stack? 20 unit stack, I mean? No, it was a, like a 
10 units. Uh, did your side have an artillery advantage? Um, it did not. It was line versus line. And that's definitely a weird one. Yeah. You know, it, if it, if you get if you get stuff like that, do please save a replay of it and send it in the chat so that we uh, can have a look at it. No, yeah, I, I, it's possible that the AI does it. It also depends on the campaign map itself. Maybe um, in the Dunma field, it's a more open space. It always, I mean, I test more in that battlefield. I never have that issue. Um, it, in the, the right the, field, it, it's definitely also just tied to map elevation and hills. Well, the there is a I I cre I used a, a system where the AI goes in one line. Uh, in theory, you could fix it if it goes in two lines. But the problem is the the vanilla formation is two lines. You probably have seen it in the uh, yeah. former games. But the problem mm -hmm. is with two lines is that the AI is not smart enough to use those two lines and then put them in one line. Because the eye comes forward with two lines in line, but the first line only shoots, fires, and the other one behind just stands there statically. Now you could say eye is good for reserves, but it doesn't make, you know, it's not really logic, because if you're shooting in one line and you're flanking them, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's stupid. It's that's why just put makes them, their formation smaller. Yeah, that's why I put them in one line of the, over the entire battlefield, because it's, at least then they use their all their troops. I mean, of course, it means also they put their cavalry in line. That's the only crappy stuff, but yeah, you have to choose. You know, otherwise they just send their cavalry to death. That's also a possibility, so yeah. yeah. But next time I encounter it, I'll save a replay and send it, yeah. But do you, do you had it before in line a couple of times or always had it in column? It was a, it was a bit of a gamble, really. I tested a couple of times. Yeah, a bit of both. Uh, I mean, I can put it back in two lines. Uh, that's also a possibility. But uh, in, in yeah, the few the times I tested it, um, did always appear to me, as least, that they would prioritize moving a line if terrain allowed it. Yeah, same for me. At least on the battlefield, I always test this. That's that's actually a good thing to to know about is that you cannot give the AI too much pathfinding issues because it really blobs up. So that means in, if I ever make custom map, they have to be really more open field with some elevations, of course, but not too much because the AI can't handle it. The same for structures when you make siege battle maps, you have to make them. Uh, to make it for the AI, not for the player, because the player, of course, can think for itself. But AI really needs a lot of space so it can easier maneuver. Yeah. I've noticed but, that when, like, um, playing a mod, you might know, like, a, um, what is it, Strongholds of the Samurai, I think? Oh, I yeah, think correct. Mom, yeah. By the way, really fucking good. But the AI sometimes just gets a siege whenever it's like a bit more of a complex castle that's pleasant i i <laughs> yeah i also get seizures on that in game castle so yeah exactly it's not really that big it's not really a problem because it always gets a seizure while sieging i mean any total war game really to be honest yeah that's why you have to make a fort uh, a fortress that is actually pretty big and round, so it can easily maneuver with a lot of space uh, in the fort, because otherwise you get issues with a castle, like with the, you have the, how you call it, a, a ten, tensho or something, whatever in the middle, a little castle, yeah. you know? Uh, the keep. I yeah, know, the, the European, that's that, that thing has to, cannot be there, because it's, you know, it's again, it gives prob problems with pathfinding for the AI again. So you really have to make it easy for the AI to maneuver. That's how you have to actually make siege maps and battle maps. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's... No, that makes sense. Then again, European fortresses tend to be bigger, more open. Correct. Yeah. Especially around that time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I love that. Like, yeah, um, that as well. like a piece of media I uh, could definitely recommend to um, 
all the people listening to see the style of fortress we are talking about is um ah, what's it called again the star uh, ball uh, is it a star fort? Okay, no, yes. um, I actually need to look up the name again. The uh, Palmerston Forts? Or like or a round one? Hmm. That, that I know, I was uh, the Palmerston Fort was like the really last uh, from the Victorian age that I read about. Uh, but yeah, the problem is you had such big guns <laughs> in those times. I had to just shoot the entire. Uh, you mean building just... walls didn't really matter anymore, did it? Yeah, I mean, look, look at Belgium uh, in the First World War when the Germans came in with their big Berthas. Uh, fucking gone. Bye bye. So, uh, I mean... Not, not until not um before they lost like twenty thousand men in the siege of Liège. Yeah, but still, the, the Germans wasn't... lost twenty thousand. God's sake. Yeah, yeah but before think... they then rolled up the guns and shelled the fortress into oblivion. The thing was, they said the fortress was in pass. I mean, not a... You could not take the fort. There you go. They said that you weren't able to take it. But they were. <laughs> they just fucking deleted it, basically. Ah, well, it, it's the same story with the forts around Antwerp. Germans tried to take them, took heavy losses, brought up the artillery, and eventually won. That's actually strange that they are normally always blow up first in our um, fortification, no? But, it's uh, because at the time they were trying to go as fast as possible to be able to surround the French. And also, oh, yeah, if, you want, if you're thinking about it, if you want to take a fort, you wouldn't want to take it without damaging it too much, because if you get counterattack and the fort is still whole, you can use it against him. But if you bomb it into oblivion, it's not really used to you, is it? True, yeah. Or you have to be have a fort like Fort Wagner, mm -hmm. and it, it takes because like a fort out of stand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah. Let's let's see. Yeah, what, what you think? I mean, I think what I'm happy about is at least how smooth the gameplay goes. Um, I mean, at least on my gaming uh, PC. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed it because you know the units are bigger, double as big as the vanilla size, but yeah, I don't, I don't have any frame drops, so that's a good thing. At least I don't know what you guys uh, do. You have any frame drops or whatsoever? I do, I do actually, because um, again, the AI tends to like blob every single unit it has, just in somewhere, and so what happens is. Every single battle turns into this like big melee slog fest. So when that happens, and there are like hundreds and thousands of bodies just in one place, the game can get a little bit laggy if I zoom in. But if I if I just try to be tactical and watch from afar, and it's not that bad actually. It's it's okay. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, in my, uh, I mean, I don't have so much like, uh, like those blobbing up anymore, but I mean, for me, it's pretty okay. Um, I don't have any issues. Uh, yeah, people can always lower down their unit sizes then, eh? so. Yeah, I'm also, yeah. Well, you, you did double the uh, unit size on us. You, you did. So yeah, even because... if you put it lower, that would just bring it to what vanilla would be. 200 units, yeah. I think that's the... Uh, I'm not really sure it goes to 200, maybe even lesser if you really go to smaller ones. But I think, I mean, personally, I don't know. For me personally, with the 400 units, uh, it actually, for me, it goes pretty well because I really worked on making low res texture maps and low polygon units. So, um, for me personally, it's actually the same as a vanilla game with 200 units, personal, but I'm not sure. Of course, I got a GTX 1070, but even then, and a Ryzen, so, yeah, mm -hmm. Ryzen 3, no, 5, sorry. So, yeah, for me, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty okay. It's also really difficult to, like, get different graphics cards and all that nowadays seeing as yeah. in quarantine everyone's getting a gaming pc and all of them are basically sold out 
So. Yeah, eight scalpers. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm also was going to upgrade my PC normally this year, but no, I was no, like, nope. Wait, 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 um, we're just going to the, wait to next year. Yeah, I was like, the, nope. Then the RDX um, 360 or something. Then they like triple in price. Yeah, if the 3070 normally costs like mm. five hundred dollars. That's actually msrp price uh, i've i've seen and those go for up to a thousand dollars yeah it's markets. Through, even in belgium if you go to a normal uh, shop say alternate for example um it's like more than a thousand euros no freaking way I'm not normally it would be closer to around 600 because belgium tax yeah. yeah of course but even then i mean that price fine but a thousand, I'm not paying more than a thousand euros to get it. I'm not paying a graphic oh, card. It's too, too expensive. Much. Really much. It's just too much. Sorry. So I'm I'm waiting until prices go down and then I upgrade my PC. I mean, probably new PC. So it sounds logical, doesn't it? Yeah, I I've, I've just decided to invest my money elsewhere and I uh, bought a good pound of uh, parts for my airsoft AK today. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. nice. Nice. So, so yeah, I finally well, yeah. have an optic on it. <laughs> after all cool. these years yeah I mean why now it's just waiting for the clubs to open again yeah that's gonna take a bit isn't it 9 okay. of June maybe uh, mm, it's, it's, so. it's, then again I'm not going to partake in it before I'm fully vaccinated yeah it's not again logical September Oh. Uh, no, it's, it's, I'm expecting to be around December because my dad just about like this week got his first invitation. Okay. I think they're now getting yeah around 45, 48 people from that age. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, let's see how it goes uh, back to normal life a bit and hopefully prices are cheaper than for PC parts because it's really crazy. Like I'm, I'm actually hoping for like um, the normalization of supply chains for computer components and the crypto bubble burst to go at the same time at the end of the Hopefully, year. Hopefully, yeah, because because then prices will just collapse. Yeah, and you'll be able to get I... like what thirty seventy for like two hundred second hand. Yeah, but sometimes I have this feeling that the companies that actually make those cards, like AMD and Nvidia, especially. The kind of thing they do it a bit on purpose, uh, but okay, not at, maybe... at this point in time. I I doubt any of them would like would basically be like, oh, we're going to make less cards so we can sell them at a the higher price. While if they just made more cards, they would just be making more sales and more profit in the first place. Yeah, probably because not a lot of people are. It's going it's to pay just main. It's mainly that um, at the beginning of. The COVID outbreak, all the economists were predicting a recession to hit around this time period, so everyone just lowered production. And then the recession didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, especially, actually, the digital market was never it, it as high as now. It exploded, and AMD only has that much capacity at TSMC to make stuff. Correct, yeah. Nvidia is stuck with their contract with Samsung to make cards, and who's still buying Intel? Intel yeah. Ryzen is way better. Why would you ever buy Intel? For the <laughs> for the moment, yeah. Yeah, Ryzen for the better, moment, but... exactly. Keep that in mind for the moment. And like, AMD is just going to fill fulfill their contracts with the highest return, and those are their enterprise sales and the supercomputer contracts. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. going to wait. Uh, I'm going. I'll, I want to make an entire. I'll buy a lot of new parts. I can make an entire new PC. So I'm just waiting. Uh, I got a 1070. I was normally going this year to go to a 3070. Uh, also, new CPU. But you know, I, I think I've heard that AMD is probably also making a. No one that is actually better. CPU yeah, the... uh, uh, Computex is uh, happening in what two days, so uh, we're waiting for a lot of announcements. Then, how many uh, nanometers are they now? Like, uh, uh they're they are uh, assumed to do a seven, seven nanometer refresh, but uh. it's also possible they could move to five, depending on how far along that node is. Yeah, but my question is, uh, um. 
because you're like what the how how low can you go actually uh currently the lowest we can go is three nanometer with a two nanometer process in the making but at some point we are going to have to move to a different material than silicon and copper and currently the most likely candidates are carbon nanotubes yes those are highly conductive and somewhat easy to shape at that small of a level i'm interesting about that because apple also came with a cpu that is actually pretty okay i heard it's um, okay it's just that it can't run windows yeah or linux so yeah, there's a problem it it's like yeah, it's good, but um, I don't want Apple. I I don't want macOS. I don't want the Apple no. ecosystem. I yeah, don't yeah. want the Apple product. So, it's it it's there. It's good, but uh, I have no incentive to use it. No, I don't like uh, Apple. It's uh, very restrictive in its hardware and software. Uh, nah, probably pretty good. I'm not saying to Apple fans, uh, whatever that it's a bad product, but. Uh, Apple, Apple has its use cases, especially with people that are a lot less tech savvy. You don't want to be able to actually screw up their devices. Yeah, the problem is it's very, it's not really open minded. How can I say, you know, you want to upgrade it? It's a bit more difficult with a Mac. So then yes, with well, a... it's practically straight up impossible unless you buy the uh, way too overpriced uh, Mac Pro. Yeah, and not only that, if they ask so much money for like the most basic components that are actually part of that PC, they all sell it apart for uh, for much more money. I mean, like I heard they even sell a, a PC screen, I mean a screen, uh, and you have to buy the screen, but the, the, the standing or the stand, you have to buy it apart, like for crazy no amount way. of money. I'm like, no. oh, isn't that part of a screen normally? It honestly, honestly, the screen, it, it does actually make sense if you look at who actually is the customer for that monitor. Because everyday people are not going to buy it. It's way too expensive for that. The people that are going to buy them are people that use those monitors for work and they're just going to put them on their own face amounts. Because they already have their setup, so they are just going to swap out the monitors they have for new ones on the VESA mount setup they're already using. And that's why they don't normally include, and that's why Apple chose not to include a stand with them. It's still a great meme that it is a fucking overpriced stand, it's honestly not even that good. Yeah. yeah. But it makes sense why they wouldn't include it. Oh, kind of, yeah. if you, if you like, it. it's a $5,000 monitor. None of us is ever going to buy it. Why would you even need a $5,000 monitor, let's be honest? It, it's, it's a monitor made for people that need color accuracy and do color grading work in dark rooms. Mm, guess, yeah. it, it's, yeah. for, it's for people who have that as a job. To be quite honest, I mean, honestly, I mean, I have a 144 hertz uh, full HD screen. I, I don't really need more than that, to be quite honest. I mean, I don't even play newer games. The, the, the latest one I bought was actually Context 3 and the Age of Empires Definitive Edition, the HD and whatsoever, because a friend of mine always does multiplayer. So that's actually that's, those were the last games I actually bought. For the rest, I don't buy because they all suck. The newer games. I mean, that's my opinion, of course. Eh? I mean, <laughs> you can play or buy whatever game you want, but I think I feel that you know I'm a bit of an older generation. I think, and um, I bought games when they were finished and they were in a CD and they were pretty good. Now, like, all games is about. DLCs and microtransactions and loot boxes and it's just making me crazy to be quite honest. So no thanks. The general state of the games industry does seem to have declined from what it used to be. It's it's greed, I think. But I call it greed. Then then again, there is still the 
very healthy in the market, which does actually give a shit. Yeah, but there isn't really like we like for example Total War. I mean, yeah, did you hear the news about that they are going to uh, finish developing Three Kingdoms after two years? Yeah, they are. They've just Jesus. they've pumped and dumped. But that is that's a bit nasty, yeah. I mean, two years and already said bye bye. You're going to start with another game. The the problem with Three Kingdoms is that. It's, it's a very unfortunate time period to actually make a game of because everyone was just using the same units. Yeah, there, but, there, there was mean, no real variety the game could have had, like the Total War Rome would have had. Yeah, but I mean, they knew that. I mean, they they wanted to go to the Asian market, so they wanted it. So it was their choice. They knew what were the consequences of that era. I mean. So you know what the biggest thing is that CA their biggest community doesn't come from Asia, actually comes from Europe and the United States and whatsoever. I mean, sure, also a lot of people from Asia, especially historical fans and whatsoever. But the biggest group was from the Western countries. So that I heard they're going to a, a, like another Three Kingdoms. They're going to make another Three Kingdoms game. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, it doesn't make any sense because there are parts of Chinese history that are a lot more diverse and a lot more interesting. For example, the Warring States period around what was it again, 500 BC, where you actually had six distinct nations fighting it out for rule over China, which in and of itself is a lot more interesting period because they all have their own separate cultures because they have already been in sep there's already been separate kingdoms for like close to 500 years at that point but uh, yeah what I do not understand is like I mean they made a big campaign map right they can even go further with the campaign map go to another area I mean I don't like paradox DLC stuff but I don't understand why they just do what they do with Warhammer. So they expand the campaign map and they even put new cultures to it, you know, go more south or whatever, east, Korea, Japan. And then and then with that map, they could use them for another, say, another historical game. I don't understand why they go to start all over again, because my feeling is they're going to start all over again, uh, ask a full price game, but they're going to reuse the unit models from Three Kingdoms. I'm almost 100% sure of it. That's why they did with Thrones of Britannia almost. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. Uh, we, we don't talk about Thrones of, Britann Thrones of uh, Britannia here. That game doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. not. I, uh, I decided to ignore its existence. Never. I don't have the game. Never bought it. So it was. The thing is, I heard... No, no, the sound design and the music is actually good for Thrones of Britannia. Like it's they they did a good job on that. It's just but it was that's again, it. It was just reused, just reused models from Attila and all that. And just mm, I don't like it. Yeah, but it's the same with. It's um, an interesting concept, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't do anything. It, it was the same with uh, Rome too. You had Attila, it's actually barbarian barbarian invasion from Rome, and then you have from Attila you got an expansion called then Thrones of Britannia. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense, uh, the choices that they start making. I think, you know, their corporate overlords are telling them, like, look, uh, start mm -hmm. all over again and so we can earn more money. That's, that's my feeling a bit now lately, what's happening with CA. But because my feeling feel is that... that... Yeah, sorry, tell me, uh, Pasha. Um, I, I also feel like Sega is in on this one. Like they, they're forcing CA to pump, up a, pump out a game every single year, which makes them a bit... You know, lackluster. It doesn't make any sense. If you really want to make a good game, it can sometimes take years. Especially testing okay. already takes like a really long time if you want to take bugs out because CA is also very notorious of not fixing bugs that are there since Empire Total War because it's... <coughs> the Ottomans! Yeah, so... I mean, even now I'm modding the game, there are a lot of bugs that really works, I mean, really work on my nerves because I say, like, man, why did they never fix issues? Or they fix an issue, but then they make 
or they create another bug that bug that is even worse than the previous one. So I'm like, why, why don't they actually start fixing Three Kingdoms? Because Three Kingdoms is now an unfinished game again. That's what's yeah. happening. Uh, so yeah, let's see what I... My feeling is that CA is never going to a musket H anymore. I don't know, that's really my feeling. Do you really think they're going back to a musket H? But the thing is, you know what the thing is? Every single year, they ask fans for, for like what time period do you want. There's two that prevail. It's medieval yeah. and like Napoleonic. Napoleonic to Victorian. Yeah, exactly. But they never do it. They just don't listen. Because I think it's, again, like a Rome 2 scenario. They're like, oh, we're going to fuck it up and no one's going to like it. If you're already thinking like that, yeah, I mean, they don't screw up. Eh? I mean, we're like Rome 2. I don't screw up. I mean, they're not the wrong, game. but... <laughs> they're not totally wrong, but still, they should put more effort into it. It's like, yeah, they, they remastered Rome, but I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, like I don't feel comfortable with the game either. I feel there are some stuff that are even worse than the, than the vanilla game than the older game. At least I'm mechanics, honest, I, don't like I don't like it. Huh? I mean, I'm sure a lot of modders will really make really cool... You know, that's the sad thing, eh? that sometimes Total War is good with mods. It's otherwise, really? it's otherwise really lackluster without mods. Mm. Some games, like Shogun 2, is a really good game that you know, don't need to play mods with. That's my opinion. But all the other ones, you need mods. Otherwise, it just sucks. Shogun 2 is good with and without mods. It's just amazing what they come up with. And it's amazing. The game is just its really good. It's a big step up from like Empire and all that, honestly. And uh, it has the three distinct time periods in it. With Rise of the Samurai, then the main campaign, and then Fall of the Samurai. I mean, Rise yeah. of the Samurai is garbage, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, but mods. Yeah, mods, I mean... Mm, they're not really that much mods. I've seen lately now they're, they're sparking up. If you go at multi P, there are much more new mods. That's actually a pretty good thing for the community. So new modders go more to Shogun 2 than, than before, because most of the time it was Rome 2 or Attila. So... Mm -hmm. Good thing in three kingdoms that are there any mods like really big overhaul mods uh not that i personally know I of so. i don't know why i just don't like the game i just played it for 15 minutes and i'm like ah oh, no not... i just don't like the general system you know you need generals in the army and yeah yeah that's the oh, thing i really dislike i hate that. it i mean i just really hate it i mean yeah, let's let's see how 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 we go forward. But I I doubt they will go back to a musket age. I really doubt it. I don't, I just think they can't make one because they know they will screw up. That's what I think. Also, that there are no fleets. You need fleets, of course, with a musket age game. Mm -hmm. um, they are taking away a lot of mechanics and they are not introducing that much, except maybe with Troy, where they had the resource system. That's pretty cool, but the amount of things they actually take out, it just becomes, it becomes boring. Total War becomes boring. That's my opinion. I know what you mean. I mean, I'm going to be honest, Troy, it got a lot of negative feedback, but I kind of liked it. It wasn't bad. Never played it. Don't know. I did. It was, it was not bad. I think the main, like, um, the reason why people were like so negative about it was because of the deal with Epic Games that they made. Yeah, they probably knew they were losing a lot of money, so they were like, "Let's take Epic money." So who knows? So even if it goes badly, you know what? I think they shouldn't have done like a mix of myth and reality. They should have gone for one. Either they went full on fantasy Troy. Or full on realistic for it, one of them. But they did a mix and I hate it. Well, they tried in 3K, yeah, but the 3K one, the records mode really sucks. So. Yeah, but I don't like the hero system. Like, um, the general hero system is fine, but I mean, like, the mythical units. 
a, a, a fucking minotaur is just a guy with a fucking fur fetish. It's not fun. It's, it's weird. I would because... rather have a real minotaur on the battlefield. That would have been way cooler. You know, actually, Empire Total War, if it was working, if they worked on it, I think it was really a good game. That's my view. If, if they would have actually tried to fix Empire Total War, it would have been a fucking masterpiece. It is a really Biggest good game. map ever, and immense amounts of content, but they cut out um, they cut out dialogue, cutscenes, voice acting. They just narrowed it down so much. Yeah, I think, it's be- I think it was Sega probably forcing them to, to yeah, release exactly. it because they were like, all the money we invest in you in a new engine whatsoever, we want that money back as fast as possible. So I'm sure Empire, I played it like recently again. I was like, actually, okay, it has these bugs and annoying ones. But it's a really it has a lot of content. It's a really good game, actually. It, it really worked. It. Uh, it's it saddens me. That's why I feel that they never go. They will never go back to a, a musket age uh, one. Never. Too much work, mm-hmm. I think. Um, the amount of changes they have to do to the AI. It's much more simpler to have an AI that is melee focused, and it's like range focused, like linear focused. As the uh, the musket age, or well, the eighteenth, nineteenth century, I doubt it. So yeah, I get it. I don't know what Jeff thinks uh, thinks about it. Maybe so. it, it honestly always just brings us back to the idea of total war, Izzy. Yeah, where uh, it, it's basically just why not just grab ourselves a copy of Unreal and start from the beginning. Yeah, I'm going to study uh, the Unreal Engine from next month. So let's see how that goes. Um, a bit practice, I guess. It's not always easy to start making your own game because you need a lot of time, effort whatsoever. So let's see how it goes. If it, if it takes a team of 500 people a couple of years, it's going to take one man a lot longer than that to make a game. Well, you see the the guy from Mana Lords. He's a lonely guy. He's yeah, working no, a lot. I've seen that. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, but he's a. Uh, I think if you have the will to do it, you can do it. Does it take time? Yes, it will probably take some years. But I think it's good. You take your time with the game. It makes the game only better, personally. Um, and if you have fans and people that. Uh, like it. I mean, you have a really hardcore fans, and they really will support you. I'm sure of it. If you really make a good game, are communicative towards the fans and the community, and make mod tools and whatsoever, you know, be more a bit more pro consumer. I know it's not always easy if you want to earn money because it, it is uh, uh, and it still will be a, a product. But if you're a bit more closer to the community, it will actually increase the, the the value of your product also that's at least my opinion yeah so i'm uh, probably going to bring a, a bit of a downer note into podcast with this but um game labs the game studio set up by darf yeah has been bought out by still front group and who is that uh I'm um, not really sure who they are, but um, their business model is low risk, long life cycle games. Low That's... risk. So I just it's checked the Game Labs website and all mention of their War of Independence game that would practically just be a Total War game has been removed from the website. Oh, yeah, that means. But he, but but he's Dart the owner of Game Labs, uh, or he was one of the founders. I don't know if he's still there. Uh, but is he like he's he's a Greek, and because I know Dart from some years ago, and he was a uh, actually a uh, modding empire when he had a he was actually going to work almost for CA, but CA declined him that I remember, and he was really pissed off with that because I and saw some... Then he started his own studio, Game Labs, and made Ultimate General Gettysburg, and then Ultimate General Civil War. Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I think in, he actually talked with a, a, a friend of mine. He's a software engineer. He actually knows how to make you know, like his own engine engine games, you know, for games and whatsoever. So he always told me to start something small, especially if you're one guy or whatsoever. And and that's why maybe, you just started off with one battle. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking about, you know. Um, to start something like this, something small, something cheap, and work from there, uh, there on. So to make something like Total War, but just back into the roots of Total War, not the, the crappy corporate crap. But that's the problem with a lot of... Uh, I was afraid for game labs, by the way, and the same for Mana Lords, uh, by the way. Um, money talks. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. how how will you be if you make a game, you make a good game, even some games or whatsoever, and then comes a big corporation and tells you, look, I pay you millions of dollars, euros to buy your company. Now, I mean, or just to, to buy the that. intellectual property of the game. Yeah, but they will pay you millions of dollars, you know. There's, there's not a lot of people who are going to decline at that point. Exactly, because you know, like, I'm in. You know, I'm Respect in, and I now leave it for someone else. But that's the sad point that a lot of those big corporations, they buy all those studios or intellectual property of, of more indie developers or whatsoever, and in the end, they actually screw up the reputation of that, that uh, studio. I mean, it's really difficult to stick with your principles as a gaming developer if you have your own business, you know? Like, honestly, one of the only companies I've actually seen being able to do that is It Tech under uh, Bethesda. Bethesda? Yeah, Bethesda do own um, It Tech. Okay. Which... Bethesda not really, doesn't have a really good reputation either, right? Eh? No, yeah, but Doom is still good. And released bug free. But that's a bug free game. No, that's yeah. just fucking bullshit, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's because yeah. they don't use Bethesda's, en Bethesda's engine, they have their own. There you go, That that's the difference. Yeah. Actually, CA has to create another engine, by the way, or at least reprogram. The engine because I, I don't think there's so much problems on the Warscape engine. I think it's the way it's programmed that it's really badly done. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's let's see how I will keep on modding it eh, for a Victorian Age uh, mod because I doubt they will ever go there. So hopefully, make it makes the community a bit happy. Um, hopefully, you don't have too many problems learning uh, C. Oh, yeah, C. Actually, no, I see um, a lot. No, I do know uh, a couple of people from school that actually know the basics of programming. I can always get you in touch. Yeah, for, for later, but uh, the Unreal Engine, is it written in C++? I doubt it, right? Uh, it is. Ah, uh, it is. It, it uses C++ as a base, and then it's everything on top of that. But it, it's a complete engine suite. It has everything you need. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I will study a bit. I've actually studied C. I'm pretty okay with C. So, because I've done some programming hardware and all that stuff in the past. So, I know I have a bit of an idea in C, actually. I do know that you can write C code uh, in a C++ compiler. So... I mean, I don't know, it, it really depends, but of course, if you want to go to vast, more especially gaming development, C++ is the way to go, of course. Um, but yeah, I will, I will see, uh, I will just work on my mod study a bit, uh, Unity, and let's see what I, I can make of it. Maybe something small, and let's see if I can work uh, from there a bit, a bit more. Uh, so, let's see. Any other questions, actually, for the mod? Um, uh, not so much for the mod, it's at this point just basic, just a general conversation. Yeah. Actually, I always receive uh, the same question like, are you going to make a European campaign and how are you going to make it? I already actually made 
or tested the size of a European campaign map with the size I have now. It's a huge, huge campaign map, like huge, huge European one. I already made it actually, and I tested it, just some raw test to see if it actually converts, and it does convert. The other thing is, of course, the issue is with the invincible, uh, invincible, uh, invisible settlements. I have to find out uh, what's the problem with it, but the pathfinding, uh, it takes a long time to make it in game readable format, but it does work. It just takes a bit of time. So, but I do know that I already tested it and you actually can make a full European campaign map with the uh, the size of, you know, a big, a huge size. So just if people already know, I already have tested it, so. But uh, plan is first, finish Carlist Wars, go to North Africa for the French invasion of Algeria and Morocco and whatsoever. And then we go to the east, uh, we go and add Italy and Libya to the, and Tunisia to the game. Um, and then we go to the north and then we have almost all of continental Europe. That's the purpose of uh, the mod. It's going to be uh, very exciting, of course, to see all of that come to fruition. Yeah, I'm happy I've, I'm, there's a, a guy, and actually I have to thank him also. It's uh, Arcan Arcanas. He's Husky Total War on Total War Center. He actually helped out to fix the sound issues uh, we actually had that you could only add one rifle sound and whatsoever. So thanks to him now, you can actually add individual uh, sounds to a projectile. So that's also pretty big after how many years did Fall of the Samurai came out? 2013 after like yeah, eight years? Yeah, we can years. get some beefy cannon sounds. Yeah, it, it, after eight years, we're finally managed to, to do that. So we still are discovering things. It's actually pretty insane after eight years of, of uh, the game that is uh, cut out because he actually screwed up the sound file for, uh, for the game. So... So all thanks to him because he is the one that actually investigated a lot uh, in it. So we can we could finally have uh, a more different sound uh, the way the muskets work, rifles and whatsoever. So a lot of exciting things to come. It will be a full blown Victorian mod, at least for Europe. Let's see how far we can go. But at least for Europe, we will have a full blown uh, Victorian age uh, mod. So first Carlist Wars, and then the rest but let's take our time and not rush anything right no of no course. i'm uh working on uh animation now finishing that so that i don't have to work on that anymore and then uh continue with the models i just have to do the portuguese i mean i already have the land the units just have to add the cavalry and whatsoever then the Spanish, of course, and then I have already all the playable factions in theory. So that's, we are pretty mm -hmm. close to the first Carlist Wars uh, mod already. Does anyone have an idea why I actually started with Spain? Um, uh, probably because you're a Spanish wife. Uh, <laughs> that's also correct. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit of tidbit information for all of you guys listening. Uh -huh. That's correct, but there's also another reason, because I had that question. Actually, Lord John also mentioned it one time in one of his videos, why I actually used chose, chose the Carlist Wars, I mean Spain. And the reason lies actually for the campaign map. The most logical part to, to start was South West Europe. In the corner. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, because from there you can expand to the east and north, and then you have Europe. That's why it was much easier. It was starting for, for example, from the north, it was much more difficult to actually have to, start. So that's have to add a lot more just to have a functioning campaign because there's just a lot more there. Yeah, and you have to add more factions. I was thinking I'm going to start with something smaller, smaller scale war, like a civil war. And from there expand to a much bigger one. So then I know, okay, I already made a big part of the game. I just have to make unit models, part of the other campaign map, but all the rest is actually quite finished. That's why, actually. 
So let's see. Let's see how it uh, how it goes future. So if there are no other questions, then I probably will stop uh, now. It's been a bit of a shorter episode. There's just not too much that we have had to talk about, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking there were other members coming, but probably not so yeah, for another time. I will make a... Then now, that, have a... now that um, schoolwork is going to be slowing down for me uh, after next month, we're going to do these a lot more regularly. Uh, yeah. I keep saying that and then not doing it. Yeah, but time. You need to have your private life. You want to have fun in life, so... And there, was, there was also like not really anything to talk about for two months. Correct, yeah, I, was, I wasn't modding for two months, so that's why I couldn't do that much. But now uh, it's, it's coming back, so um, I'm going to also make a, a dev diary also on my YouTube channel. I don't make so much dev diaries, and the reason why is like I'm not going to make a dev diary for one small part. I really want to show a, a big part that has been added, you know, you have much more uh, to talk about. That's why I was also waiting to have like a good couple of alphas out before I made an update video on my channel about it. Yeah, bro. So I'm I'm thinking I only will probably make a dev diary when I have a finished campaign ready. So I can explain a bit the information how the game goes because I'm sure people will not know how the game will go and they will start asking questions. So there I will explain the information where and where. So with that I would uh thank you too for joining in. Uh, of course thank everyone who has listened all the way through this point it's uh, a bit shorter of an episode but still has a good uh, a lot of good information in it if you listen all the way to the end again i'm going to do these more regularly and you'll know when i'm going to be doing these as i'll be asking a um asking for everyone's questions yeah if people want to join our discord ask questions there of course, I cannot always answer the questions, but uh, you're welcome to join the Discord. Um, so it can grow a bit at the Victorian age. I mean, there are so many people. Well, we, we've we've uh, broken the 1,000 members barrier. That's true. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, um, that, I that's, was expecting that... <laughs> a bit more for the Victorian age fans, but uh, okay. Well, it's no mainly problem. because there's nothing playable yet. Yeah, I, know. I, I assume the moment when we get something playable out and people are actually going to start doing campaigns on it on YouTube, we're going to see a lot more traction. Yeah, I haven't seen so much for Scramble. Um, not that much, actually. I think there's only one YouTuber that really was Lord John, and I think that's it. No one else actually really played. I mean, on YouTube, so... Okay, no problem. Well, is, is Cramble really um, had its problems? Then yeah. again, it's all a test. With yeah. True. It, true. It shouldn't honestly have been playable in the first place. If yeah, not for uh, us just dicking around with the unit tables at like, what, 11 in the evening? Right yeah. before an event. Yeah, <laughs> correct, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I think there are a lot more games, Total War games, more popular on YouTube. I think it's Rome 2 Attila for the Medieval Kingdoms 1212 and DVD and Impera. And it, yes. it also it's really been, depends uh, on who plays it. Yeah, well, I think also this thing about... Because yeah. like up in this up to this point, the most popular series done on any of your mods is um Officially Devin's narrative let's play of uh, V1. Oh yeah, that was... Uh, that, that mo I don't understand why people like that mod. It actually, it really sucks. <laughs> From a technical standpoint, it really does suck. But yeah. there's just something fun about just seeing giant columns of infantry being mown down. Yeah, it's... it's yeah, if I think, I was like, oh lord, it really sucks, but okay. I'm actually I'm hoping that Devin makes... Uh, one for V2. That will actually make my day uh, good. To see him or play. maybe for the Carlist Wars at some point. Yeah, of course. There's, there's a lot of storytelling that can be done there. Yeah, there is a, a real good story. So, end scripts and winter and summer uniform. 
for the first time, so... Then again, I'm not really sure what's currently, well, up with him and his narrative Let's Plays, as he's made a separate channel for those, but then never really did anything, so... Yeah, maybe not really sure how it's going at that point. Yeah, I mean, people. I think people vote uh, for it, uh, if I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, they vote for it. So, I mean, the one I, I always ask it most of the time, Lord John, because Lord John is a YouTuber I actually really like because he really sticks on his principles. He doesn't like so much melee-focused total wars. He really sticks with Empire, Napoleon, the Fall of the Samurai. Um, you see lesser and lesser. Uh, there are more that are focused on you know, melee-focused uh, Things. I mean, YouTubers mostly, of course, because they want to be partnered with CA, they have to play like Warhammer and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, it's, it's normal. So no problem. They're business, so they have to work on it. So. But I find that like watching Total War games, someone else play them is not entertaining in my opinion. Um, campaign, play? yes, I can enjoy it. I can enjoy the battles, but the game itself, I can't really enjoy watching someone else play it. It's a bit <laughs> boring, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I'm, and most of the time I look at uh, campaigns when I'm modding at the same time. Yeah, you screens. put them in the background most of the time, right? Yeah, I got two screens and one part I mod and the other part I just look at the campaign. Uh, like from Pixelator, Apollo, and whatsoever. Jackie mm. Fish. Um, those are the ones I mostly see. Jackie Fish, Pixelator, Apollo, and Lord Sean, I think. That's really it. Lionheart? Lionheart, not much, no. Not that much. Uh, no, I'll, it's been a long time since I watched any of his stuff. Yeah, same. Like, uh, uh, I think it was the Get A campaign. It was like the last time I really watched his stuff. I, I saw like uh, what was the Chogun Chogun guy? What was uh, a smart donkey or something? You know that guy? Yeah. Smart donkey. Yeah, smart. <laughs> he was a big fan of Shogun too, but lately he doesn't play that much. Uh... No, he only plays Three Kingdoms now, which is a bummer. Well, yeah, or le now also more different games than just uh, Total War. So, yeah. Bit of a shame, really. Yeah, I mean, people's choice. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. you know, it, I think the market is oversaturated with the total war content, especially the newer ones. Um, yeah, I don't think. And also with YouTube's new rules, you don't get so much views for games and whatsoever. So it's really difficult, I think, for YouTubers now to really go around. That's my uh, mm -hmm. opinion. I know Jeff is a YouTuber, so he must know. It's it's honestly just finding anything to put out. I I don't really have the most consistent upload schedule, so yeah, yeah. I know. Or you have to make something for babies or children, like Playmobil or Lego or something. Then or or it's, Minecraft. Honestly, the algorithm changes like every week. Crazy. Like that that was popular for a while and now it isn't anymore and then long form content was popular and now it's like YouTube pushing these shorts. Oh, yeah, it, it, it just when... changes every like month. Remember when YouTube was like when, when they got a when they got a com wait, what was it again? Um you YouTubers started swearing and they were like this this pla platform is kid friendly. And then whenever the the EU started pressing on them for their ad campaigns. They were like, this is not kid friendly. Th then all of a sudden they changed to, no, this is an adult platform only. Like, what What are you talking? Like, please. And then they made YouTube kids. Yeah, but still. Which is even more confusing. Kids. They made yeah. YouTube kids? Really? Yeah, they did. Yeah. I have we no idea. Yeah, but you don't yeah. have monetization, playlists, subscriptions, likes, dislikes, uh, comments. 
It, it's yeah, just I, videos. Man, I remember those times. Uh, you know, I'm in my 30s, so I've actually seen YouTube upcoming, and I remember that YouTube was not yet purchased and bought from Google. I mean, Google didn't bought it yet. I remember it was really like for creators. Now it's sadly like more, it's com- everything is commercial now. There's not really something you yeah. can say, okay, here you can go for a creator and you can earn money because everything is is programmed the way that that the viewing is not really correct. So if you get a lot of views, I mean, th- in the past, when you had a lot of views, you were on the f- on the foreground on YouTube, on the trending list and whatsoever. Now everything is like artificially programmed that it, it doesn't matter. You know, it's more about what the purpose is for you to, it doesn't make any sense. That's what I'm saying, like, don't start YouTube, guys. So only for information and whatsoever and more not. The thing oh. is, it takes a lot, like a fuck ton of effort to get start, like get a good following in the beginning, I think. That's the most difficult part. It, it's also just the in the monetary investment behind it. Like, you need to get a good microphone, maybe a good webcam, some editing software if you don't like using the free stuff, a decent computer. Yeah, it's a uh, sad thing of creators. Then, yeah. And success is just not guaranteed. No, it's, of course uh... not. Yeah, it's a mix uh, of I've been doing stuff. YouTube for close to six years at this point, and how many subs am I actually at? I keep forgetting. I don't even have subs. I mean, I have like... I'm at 128. I don't even know how much I have, actually, but I mean, I don't really care, because for me, it's more for the mod. Um, but, yeah. And honestly, most of it has all come from the mod. Oh, well. Here we go. Because, Something well, I'm, I'm honestly the first one to always bring out new stuff on it. I do promote it in the Discord, so the videos, like, my video on how to install the mod has now reached over 600 views. Yeah. Probably have to make that for uh, Carlist Wars also, because that's um, meant to be... It's for Scramble of the Far East, but it's practically just the same process. Then again, I'll bring out an updated version. Yeah. Just to make it but, easy for the smooth brains. You know, that uh, I don't know if you know the YouTuber Total War one, Admiral Price or something. I looked at his videos a lot. He actually stopped YouTube. Oh, yeah. Changed the decision. I don't know if you know the guy, Admiral Price. Not really. uh, if I've seen you post the video. Yeah, I subscribed uh, <clears throat> to his channel, and uh, yeah, he just quit. Uh, uh, yeah, you, know, you know Melkor? Who knows Melkor? I uh, don't know. No, I don't. He's also a uh, Total War, but he's like a Rome Total War. Not Rome 2, just Rome. So it's pretty funny to see. Like the, the original Rome? Yeah, the remaster, I'm a bit disappointed. To be quite honest, I um, like it. for me the AI looks more looks more stupid than ever. Or maybe the old game was like this, but uh, no. And the pathfinding is terrible. Mm-hmm. So yeah, who knows? Uh, you know, I think it's more Feral Interactive that did it, and CA was like, nah, thanks. They were probably That's Warhammer cool. Three. I think all their focus is Warhammer Three because this is where the big bucks uh, comes in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's logical to focus on that, isn't it? Fantasy, yeah. Normal, yeah. A lot of uh, people, I think if they ever make Lord of the Rings Total War, I think it's going to explode. That would be fucking amazing, though. Yeah, but I don't think they'll ever get it. That That would be awesome. I would buy that. If it's any good. If it is any good. If they don't fuck it up. Like uh, Warhammer 1. Yeah, do you like know that Bar- the mus- the musket guys don't have a reload uh, animation? Yeah, it's pretty pretty funny. I was like, don't they have a reload? They always shoot. Okay. Yeah, they don't have a reload. Same as the cannon, the the crew just stands next to it. Honestly, the main problem I have with Warhammer Total War is that they 
instead of adapting Total War to fit the tabletop, they adapted the tabletop to fit Total War, breaking a lot of what made factions unique. Mm -hmm. Like, just for example, the Skaven are a horde faction that rely on number, on numbers and overwhelming their enemy that way, but then their unit sizes are just standard. And they cost okay. the same as normal units, they have the same stats as normal units, they just the entire reason for the f way the faction fights has just been removed. That actually baffles me also a bit on the Warscape engine. You know, the, the recent one is the same one, eh? but it works on a 64-bit system. So it means that you can actually allocate much more VRAM and memory to, to the game. But then why in heaven's sake are their units still so small? They never go above 200, I have the feeling. It's so strange. I got the feeling they're all their VRAM. They want to use it for the graphical area of the game, but not to much bigger battles. Or maybe I'm going crazy here, but that's my feeling. Honestly, Warhammer already looks good enough. But Warhammer is more of an arcade type game. You know what I mean? Instead of like Shogun or something historical or anything, it's more of an arcade, fast paced. What's your perfect Total War game? I mean, perfection mm -hmm. doesn't exist, but what's your game like? Okay, that's how I want the Total War game to be. I want a, a mod and a an Empire Total War that actually works. That's what I want. Okay. Honestly, my ideal Total War game is one where the game itself does not have any units or ships or types of cavalry. You all have to design and research those yourself. Oh, that's actually cool. I like that. How so? Can you elaborate? So, you would have your basic soldier and you would choose what gun they would have. You would choose what kit they would be issued. Like, is it you would have to equip... You would them. decide how much ammunition they would get. Yeah. And okay. this would either make the unit cheaper or more expensive to recruit. Uh-huh, it's like Banner Lord type. Kind of. I mean, that part. Like, least... like a lot of the systems that have been implemented into Mountain Blades, where you could just make custom units. Yeah. I like, like that. Custom, like a regimental flag and whatsoever. So you could make your very cheap garrison mm -hmm. unit uh. that's not really expected to fight, and then your better unit, and then your elite troops, and then weapon well, research I... yeah. would be a separate part to that, where you would have to allocate funds to that. So it wouldn't just happen on their own by a counting down clock, like research is now. You actually have to pay for it. So you could just spend all of your money on research and have a very small army, but with very advanced technology. I like that. Oh, I really uh -huh. like that, actually. Oh, my, my idea was actually something like similar but more like um, like you actually you can you have like two mods uh, two modes and it's like one mode is like a total war where you are the ruler and you just make troops and you can customize them a bit the same way you just said but then another mode was like you are like let's say a lieutenant colonel and you have to you're responsible for a regiment a regiment of i don't know how many men was a regiment of thousand men approximately i guess or even more i don't know lesser and but then you're responsible sorry then then you're going away from like the total war base. well not really because you're responsible for the regiment's equipment pay whatsoever and you actually so you control the regiment so you're part of an empire British Empire. Yeah, so whatever. it would be a lot more like um, Ultimate General Civil War in that case, where you well, have your troops yeah. and you go along and do the battles. Well, yeah, so you are a colonel, or I mean, lieutenant colonel, so you start as that rank. You could say the lowest of the lowest for a regiment, for a regiment, and you control 
you know, the units, like in Total War, so you have a campaign map and battle map, you could say, turn-based strategy game, and the ruler tells you, okay, you and your troops have to support that army, or you're part of first core of I don't know what, you know? And the ruler tells you, like, my message is, yeah, you have to send your troops there, or you have to support your troops there, or you have to help in that battle. And then you actually rank up, where you then control, you know, you get a higher rank, where you can actually control, like, two regiments. Napoleon mode. Yeah, you get two regiments, and three regiments, four regiments, and then you become, like... And eventually uh, you become the ruler. Well, yeah, you, you become that... By doing a military yeah. coup. Yeah, exactly. That's the, the point. So you can then choose, oh, you're so popular with the people, you can then overthrow the rulers, and then you can become the king or republic or whatsoever. Is... Or you just support, so support the ruler, and then you just become the uh, chief of staff. I mean, you're the head of the army or whatsoever, and then you choose, you're the de facto ruler, but in king's or queen's name, whatever. And you support, of course, the monarchy or republic or whatever. That's how I see it, you know? That, so that's that just, also... Be that just sounds like the French Revolution, actually. Well, it, it, it also is interesting, that mod, because you can then actually do much cooler multiplayer campaigns. I would because... actually be cool. Yeah, for example, like, a country is made up of 50 people. Yeah, for example... That would be with... then engage in those large-scale battles. Exactly. Against so another this... country made up of 50 people. Exactly, that's how I see it. And then you even compete with your own men of that own nation, you know? Because in the end, you get more ranks, and you are a higher rank than your other friend that is playing or person. And you actually are competing also with each other, with the same nation, towards other people from other nations. So your goal that is to be would be a pretty ruler. interesting dynamic. Yeah, that's, and I think that is what actually lacks in Total towards the multiplayer aspect of it. I think that system will actually help a lot in the turn-based strategy games. You know, you have a regiment, and you actually go and you actually compete towards in, each other to become ruler or head of the army. But even if you're head of the army, the other person, when he's winning a lot of battles, get a higher rank and becomes more popular than you. I mean, And that's you get replaced. Yeah, and then you have to maybe fight. You can choose to rebel, so then you have you you go away with your regiment or whatsoever your army to another nation. I mean, that's how I see that dynamic. That, that's a pretty. I mean, that's an idea I have actually. I mean, yeah, for multiplayer it will be awesome, but also for single player it will be cool. You know, because in the end you become total war. Because in the end you rule. You you have control over it, all the. It would allow and... for a lot of role play aspects to be implemented. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can make your own. You buy your own equipment, and when you have a lot of funds, you can even be buying more modern equipment with guns and. To the style of something like Ultimate General. Yeah, yeah. something like this. Where I see it. Where you actually have way. to watch the economy and the supply and demand for weapons. So that's how I see a game like that. I think I, I think I like Jeff's idea a bit more than... Well, my was... idea would just feed into Izzy's. My idea is more of the core gameplay underneath. Yeah, but the thing is... Izzy is, like, it's straving away from Total War a bit. It, it's giving me, like, a no, basic of RTS course. feel more. Of course, something like a normal Total War would still be in there. Well, yeah, yeah because... It, it would just be a separate mode to it. Yeah, you, yeah exactly. You, you can actually... That's the thing I have. You have two mods of the game. So you have the... You start your own regiment in a nation, you know, whatever, your lieutenant so colonel. So, career or mode. Or you can just directly do the Total War type where you're the de facto ruler and you have the armies, but then armies can rebel and you know, revolutions and what sort of bit uh, like Total War. The other one is you actually don't, you're not, it's Total War, but a bit different. It's more in the individual regiment. It's much more interesting also for multiplayer because mm. try to do okay. a turn based yeah. strategy uh, campaign, which like Total War, it takes a long, long time. You cannot do it with 20 people. If you just rule one nation, the other one rules one nation, it can take like forever. I think that's a pretty cool as an 
as a single player, but also as an oh. especially multiplayer. Uh, you mean you? Uh, wait a second. Do you mean like a co-op with the, a few people in like the same nation? Yeah. Of course, that's what I just said. Or another nation. Who cares? Yeah, that would be cool. That would so, be and cool. that's why you also compete against. You know, you conquer other nations against other people, but you also compete towards one another to have the highest rank, be the most popular, and to be the ruler. That's actually so. It's you know, it's a both sides. It's pretty. I mean, that's I think an interesting system. And you buy your own equipment, you modernize, uh, you better guns and, and whatsoever. You can choose your own regiment flag. You can choose your own regimental name, something like this, like a mix between Mountain Blade and Total War, you could say, something like this for one mod towards another. And for, for, for equipping troops, you would like, still be at the mercy of just production, like you could be part of the Prussians and they would invent the Dreis and Eagle Rifle in 48 and you want to equip your entire army, but you can only equip like one unit because there's not enough guns on the market. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Or just not one unit, you know, when, because, you know, a regiment is not just a regiment of line infantry. You also have, you have light Cavalry, infantry, artillery, your cavalry. skirmishers. You know, and you all get that when you Engineers. actually become, when you have more money, when you are higher in the rank. So you unlock that in when you are actually are becoming more popular, when you get higher rank. So you unlock, okay, now I get a regiment of cavalry, you know? And suddenly Light your cavalry. regiment grows to yeah, a core. an army. To uh, an army group. Yeah, to so a front. Army group, and then you become a core, so you become general of the or a brigadier general and then you become game. general of a theater yeah for example you know like marshall yeah that's that's an idea i have so it will be interesting not only for single player but also for multiplayer it makes it more interesting than what we have now actually i definitely get it i get it that's an idea of, of game I wanted to make, or I want to make ever. Like like that way, I think it's a pretty cool style. Mm. Yeah, it would, it would be really cool. It would be refreshing. I don't think there are many games like it. Of course, you have to start with something small, but that's my idea, mm. of course. Um, well, let's see in the future. So with that, I um, do think we can round out the podcast. We, <laughs> we've we still uh, yep. been going for an hour 40. Yeah, it's good enough because I actually have to uh, to do something now. So I also got to go. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to thank everyone for well, attending and of course for all the people listening to actually have made it up to this point. Yep. With well, all of not- our incoherent rambling. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time I will make a, a list of, of stuff. And if you make a video, Jeff, ever for uh, the new updates uh, for the alpha, so then they know what's, what's coming. I'm going to wait for the uh, animation alpha to come out, and then I'm just going to make one big video. Perfect. Okay, I'm guys, sure. I'll see you then, because uh, I have to uh, do something now. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. Bye.